the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. My dear beloved fathers, the priests, and my faithful brethren of the Diocese of Melbourne and its affiliated regions, wishing each one of you the blessings of this joyous feast through which the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, as mentioned in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verse 14. May this feast of the Nativity bring you all hope and joy that the Savior of the world is among us. May this new year be a year that brings each of us to better know Christ and to live by his message of salvation all the days of our life. I pray that the Christ child brings to each of your families this year strength, success, and empowerment to be his reflection in the community you live in. St. Paul teaches us, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, as he mentioned in his second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 6. Without Christ, there is darkness, and where there is darkness, there is also ignorance. Through Christ's incarnation, he revealed himself to us in human form, that we may know him in the flesh and not be ignorant of his divinity. He came to reveal himself to us, and we knew him through his death and resurrection. As one Orthodox writer explains, the Gospel of John begins where Matthew, Mark, and Luke conclude. In their accounts, it is only at the end, by encountering the crucified and risen one in the opening of the Scriptures, that the disciples finally know who Christ is. Here, we must realize something very important about the disciples of Christ. It was not seeing the empty tomb or even meeting the risen Christ unknowingly that persuaded them. It was rather the opening of the scriptures and the breaking of the bread. Only in this way did they know that this is the one spoken of in scripture, as that orthodox writer explains. Saint John reminds us, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life, as is mentioned in his first epistle, Chapter 5, verse 20. How do we know him? Through the scriptures, through his teachings, and through the partaking of his body and blood that he shed for the life of the world. Saint Athanasius the Apostolic teaches us in his book on the Incarnation, saying, For what profit would there be for those who were made if they did not know their own Maker? Or how would they be rational, not knowing the word of the Father, in whom they came to be? For they would not have differed at all from the irrational creatures if they had known nothing more than the terrestrial animals. And why would God have made those by whom he did not wish to be known? So, lest this should happen, being good, he bestowed on them of his own image 
our Lord Jesus Christ and made them according to his own image and according to the likeness, so that understanding through such grace the image, I mean the word of the Father, they might be able to receive through him a notion of the Father. And knowing the Creator, they might live the happy and true blessed life. Do you realize, my dear brethren, that only a few generations ago, in the 19th and at the turn of the 20th centuries, that this knowledge of Christ through the scriptures and the teachings of the church had diminished greatly in our Coptic church in Egypt? In fact, there was only one preacher at that time that all the pulpits of Egypt desired, and that was Father Philotheus Ibrahim Baghdadi. There was a lack of knowledge of religion, theology, and the scriptures. Religious education did not exist until Habib Gerges, our most recent saint, resurrected it. It was Saint Habib Gerges who said that education is the first need for the community after bread. Saint Habib Gerges suffered beyond what any human being could bear in order to bring the Word of God to every Coptic home and to every child. He is the epitome of the faithful servant who labors day and night for the sake of bringing the knowledge of the truth of the Gospel to every creature. He did this without complaining or grumbling and accepted all tribulations and never lost hope and always had faith for a brighter future for his Coptic community. Now we are in a different era with thousands of preachers filling our parishes. Education, knowledge and books are everywhere for those that want to know God. We have a fine theological college where students can delve deeper into the mysteries of God and can be equipped to teach the community. How about you, my dear brethren? Where do you stand with respect to your knowledge of the Logos, the Christ child born in the manger on this day? Where do you stand in teaching this knowledge to your children. Moses the prophet tells the people of Israel these golden words that you also must remember and act upon. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, as mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 6 to 9. There is a significant and historic event in the life of our Coptic Orthodox Church in Australia that we need to begin to plan for. On 21 January 1969 at 6 p.m., Father Mina Na'matallah arrived in Melbourne by ship and celebrated the first ever Coptic liturgy on Australian soil with the small Coptic community at that time before heading to Sydney to begin his ministry there. We have certainly come a very long way since that first liturgy in Melbourne, and the Coptic community in Australia has achieved much. This means that on 21 January 2019, that is in five years from now, we will celebrate half a century of Coptic Orthodox Christianity in Australia. This is a significant milestone in our history, and we need to begin to plan from now for this historic day. I commend you all for the way you have brought up your children to know the Word of God, which has led to the growth of our church, and we need to begin to prepare for further expansion in order to be able to accommodate and serve generations to come. 
I pray and hope and dream that on 21 January 2019, we can celebrate together in a new cathedral at Donville, where we can gather together as a community and thank the Lord for the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. I hope that you will support this vision and work closely with me in order to achieve this next milestone in our history. During these difficult times that our mother church is facing in Egypt, we pray for the faithful there, and in particular for the safety and well-being of our Holy Father, His Holiness Pope Tawadros II, Pope of Alexandria and Patriarch of the See of St. Mark. We pray that the ministry of our beloved Pope continues to flourish and grow all around the globe. We pray for Egypt and we plead with the child of the manger to bestow his peace among all Egyptians and for a spirit of love and harmony to overshadow all. We also pray for the lands within which we live and for their leaders to govern with wisdom and the fear of God for the good of the people. Wishing you all a blessed and holy feast of the Nativity. And may this day fill your lives with heavenly joy. Be absolved through the Holy Spirit. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.